Can't argue with Ozzie Guillen's success as White Sox manager. Chicago came into Memorial Day 33-17. and That's the best record of the major leagues. So the White Sox Monday picked up the 2006 option on Guillen's contract. They added two more years to the deal, plus an option for 2009. However, Guillen is only 41 years old, a major second youngest manager behind Cleveland's Eric Wedge. And even with his new contract, Guillen showed Monday he will still occasionally make, to put it politely, odd decisions. White Sox opening a three-game visit from the Angels. Mark Burley gave up seven hits and two earned through eight. And then, Ozfest. Ozzy's letting him complete it if he can. Base hit up the middle, tying run aboard. Now you got to get Hermanson in the ball game. I don't think I don't think you leave your pitcher in after he's pitched this well of a ball game and leave him in a position where he has a chance to lose. Well, I think if you're going to get your closer up in the ball game, you got to put him in. If I'm Hermanson, I'm not happy. <laughs> Just telling you. Oh, I drive base hit right field. Die will pick it up, two aboard. Now you can't bring him in because you got a left-handed hitter at the plate. Pennants are won and lost at the end of the ball game, gentlemen. They're going to bring in Marte. Here comes Ozzie. <laughs> That's the winning run at first base, or the go-ahead run at first base, who Burley should have never faced to start with. A one-two. Oguchi gets away from him, and everybody's going to be safe. How do you like that? We shouldn't even be talking about bases loaded right now. What we should be talking about is Dustin Hermanson giving high fives right now after three consecutive outs. Bases loaded for Rob Quinlan, who lines a base hit to right field. One run is in. That's the tying run. They'll hold Devannon at third, and this one is tied at three and three. Goodness. This club may have the best record in baseball, but this is bad managing today. Got to be kidding me. This game should have been over. In the dirt, ball four. He walked in a run. Wow. It has just come apart on the White Sox here in the ninth. Well, Burley said afterward he was surprised he even went back out there to start the ninth in the first place. We go to the bottom nine. Timo Perez against Scott Shields drives in two. Perez, a replacement for Frank Thomas, the big hurt, who left in the seventh with a strained hip flexor in his first game back. And despite the top of the ninth, the histrionics, mm -hmm. they come back and win in the home half, 5-4. Good use of a word. Three games back of the AL East leading Orioles of Boston. Hey, there's Kurt Schilling and his son mocking him politely in the background. Shields uh, wearing a cleat now with extra support. He still hopes to be back before the All-Star break. Runner at third, Rafael Palmeiro with the Orioles up 2-0 on Boston Palmeiro. Now, Manny Ramirez is all over this, right? Uh, uh, Manny's throw to the plate, not in time to get Miggy T. Miguel Tejada. How did he do that? Well, Tejada reached around Veritek and tagged the plate. That's out. Tejada, three for five with an RBI. And then, that's right, David Newham, first career grand slam off of Bronson Arroyo at an 0-2 count. Rick Sutcliffe, why couldn't Arroyo put Newham away? He could not command the fastball in the strike zone. The only thing he could get over was the breaking ball. That's what they looked for. That's what David Newham got when he hit the grand slam homer. Newham, a career high, five RBIs. Bronson Arroyo, yikes, two and two-thirds, ten hits allowed and seven runs in the Boston. Eight to one loss to Baltimore. A little bit of deja vu for you. For the second straight year, the Orioles go into Fenway and throttle the home Red Sox. Both times, it was Rodrigo Lopez shutting down the Boston offense for the lopsided win, and now the Orioles have a four-game lead. Nationals hosting the Braves. First Memorial Day game in D.C. since 1971. Top seven, Brian Jordan. Left field corner. Watch closely. Marlon Bird is there. Yes. It's ruled a home run by third base up. Jerry Lane ties the game at two. Hey, hold on here. Thanks. Nationals bullpen. These guys are going bonkers. They're saying foul. Frank Robinson saying the same thing. Foul. Nationals fans saying, hey, that's a foul ball. So let's take another look. The ball goes just inside the pole it should be a home run but crew chief Ed Montague was at second he thought it was foul he changed the call foul ball home run comes off the board Jordan's at bat continues not so much Bobby Cox it afterward the umpires missed it what are you gonna do shoot him Braves lose 3-2 Washington has won two in a row after a five-game losing streak well, still a few kinks to be worked out at RFK's baseball setup. The mound's a mess. Complaints from everybody made the ground crew rebuild the mound earlier this month. The 
crew nearly lost a game for the Nationals. In fact, once when they had some bad weather, took over 31 minutes to cover the field for a rain delay. The Mets protested, seeking a forfeit, but that was denied. And then Monday, foul pole gate. The pole is not directly behind the wall in left. They're still trying to get that tarp out there. Everybody confused over Brian Jordan's would-be game-tying home run Monday. One year for Washington's ballpark, and, well, it can only get better. First, Albert Pujols facing Jamie Wright. Oh, he gets under it, does Albert. But Matt Holliday is all under it, making the leaping catch. Bottom six, tie game, bags full, Jason Marquis. Wild. Preston Wilson would score. It's a 2-1 game, Colorado. No, I want to bring this up. This okay. is important, Steve. Sure. Um, Albert Pujols has not homered in nine games. It's the longest drought of the year. Nine times. That's wrong for him. Albert Pujols in the box against Jay with Tasik. It's all about timing. Albert's 12th of the year. So much for that longest drought of the year thing. Three RBI, two for three in this game. Albert in 328 as you see that swing. And he belts it right over Holiday's glove. Off the top of the fence. Cardinals win. Jason Isring house in his 15th save and 15 chances. Cubs in L.A. First of three against the Dodgers. Jerry Hairston will lead off the game. Second pitch from Wilson Alvarez. Yard. Hairston's first of the season. Alvarez allowed three Cub home runs in the game. It's 1-0 Chicago. Bottom three. Cesar Torres. Derek Lee. Greg Maddox. Maddox's 14 gold gloves are rubbing off. It's a top lane nominee. Top five, Aramis Ramirez. I mean, they're all out there standing around like it's a party. He was three for four. This moonshot is 10th home run of the year, and it's 5 2 Chicago. Bottom five, it's his tourist again. You know, the Cubs have already been through a lot with Mark Pryor. Hello! Maddox gets out of the way this time. He allowed just one earned on five hits and six. Career win number 308. Mm. Yeah. Cubs win 5 3. Hey, the Cubbies have won four in a row. Ray's already enjoying the winningest month in franchise history. Monday, opening a 13-game homestand against the Brewers. Bruce Bochy's team, nine straight wins at home. Club record is 10. Best home record in baseball, 16 and four. And we look at last year at home versus this year for the Fathers. Winning percentage, team ERA, runs per game, team batting average. Everything's up. They, Fascinating. They, they love the new ballpark all of a sudden. All right, big time drama here. Bottom six, Phil Nevin. Off Victor Santos and Jeff Jenkins is at the wall. He's into the wall. Santos gave up just four hits and six. Pitch well. Next pitch, Ramon Hernandez. Jenkins coming in this time. Top play nominee. Yeah, back to back, great plays. Keep it tied at one. One one in the ninth. Two outs. Miguel Ojeda down the left field line. Jeff Blum is running like crazy. This is the ball game. Two outs. One one. Bottom line, they're going to wave him in from first. And the Padres. Tie a club record, their 10th straight win at home. They are 21 and 6 this month. Their most wins in a month in team history. Blue Jays and Mariners, Ted Lilly, 2 and 6 in his career against Seattle, facing Adrian Beltre. Beltre on the ground to Lilly, off his shin, right to first. Eric Hinsky tags first. Beltre out. They practice that in the spring training. Next batter, Richie Sexton. You know, the Mariners are 2 and 10 in games. They face lefties. We bring this up because Richie Sexton. Proves us. And that's belted deep Boy, is it belted. Number 13 on the year for Sexton. It's 2 0 Seattle. What a shot against Lily. Bottom five more. Sexton. Sexton nails it. Single. That'll work. That'll score Ichiro. Seattle wins. Jamie Moyer, now Seattle's all time winning his pitcher. With in top two, first and second for Julio Lugo. Base hit to right. Scores Toby Hall. Nick Swisher coming up throwing. Going to get Nick Green trying to go to third. Uh-oh. Oh, it all hung up and that ends the inning. But watch the replay. Devil Rays third base coach Tom Foley trips, waving him home. He would remain in the game. He's a tough third base coach. Ow. My head. Top two, Scott Casimir facing Swisher. Uh-oh. Dude, I lost my contact lens. You're going to have to help me look. No, he didn't. It's down. Yeah, he lost it. We've all been there. You know what? Finally, they had to go to the dugout, get him a new one. But he would strike out Swisher to end the inning. It worked out. Nice. Bottom nine. Two to two. There's the kick. Swisher down Oakland down 4-3. Two outs. They're on the corners. Jason Kendall off Danny Spies. Clutch hit to left. That's out at four. We got an extra innings. That with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Bottom 11, Mark Katze. One and two. Facing Travis Harper. Marco Scudero motoring home. A's win 5-4. They snap their eight-game losing streak. They are 4-1 in extra inning games this year.
What about the Marlins visiting the Pirates? Bottom eight, one out, two on for Jack Wilson against Jim Messier. Wilson. Luis Castillo, the flip to Alex Gonzalez. Oh, dropped it. Runner out at second, but Jose Castillo will score on the botched double play ball by Gonzalez, tying it at two. We head to extras, 10th inning to be exact. You know, Todd Jones, just one earned run allowed in his last 16 appearances, right? Sure. So we got the tie game, bottom 10, none out, two outs for Wilson. A two-out double, speaking of clutch, is Jack Wilson. Two for four, the Pirates deserve to be pumped. Two on now for Freddy Sanchez. Still bottom 10, Sanchez, and that'll do it because that's going to bring home Jack Wilson. It is over. The Pirates beat the Marlins. Jones gets the loss. You know, the Marlins have lost nine of the last 10 at PNC Park. Rocket on the mound. Reds in Houston. Clemens allowed two home runs this year. One to Joe Randa, one to Jeremy Burnett's top two. Here's the Joker. It was three for four, his fifth home run of the season. Only real mistake by Clemens, who retired 16 of his final 17 hitters. It's 2-0 Reds. Aaron Harang, 0-2. An ERA almost 12 at minute made. Missed his last start with a flu. Needs a break. Facing the Rocket, the base is loaded, and he gets him. Bottom seven. Gets Brad Ausmus as well. Harang tied his career high with 10 Ks. He tossed seven innings of five hit ball. The Reds win 9-0. The Astros have been shut out four times in Roger Clemens' 11 starts this year. Some run support, please. The Rocket probably banking on a little help from his friends when he decided to come back for the season, and he's not getting any. No pitcher with an ERA under two since 1920 has received less run support than the Rocket man has this season. The Astros not helping anybody's fantasy team this year. Speaking of which, Elko, yes. here's Dave Revson and Harold Reynolds with GMC Diamond Cutters. Somebody say spectacular? Yes, you did. Oh, well, hey. <laughs> Here are the top 10 most spectacular players from Memorial Day. Number 10, Reds Astros. Mike oh, Lamb. Sensational. Leaps, but the Astros lost 9-0. So oh, by the way. Kind of a, you know. Downer. Tale of two cities there. Dick Oh, well. Number 9, Cubs Dodgers, Derek Lee. All six foot five of them. And man, the big man is flexible. From his butt, throws it right there for the out. From what? I guess I can't say that. He's 6'5", and he's flexible. I can say that from the seat of his pants. Do you like nice. that better? I see. All right, good. Out of Number eight, Orioles, Red Sox. David Newham at the wall. Uh, you know, Fred Lynn used to hurl himself into that thing all the time. Then he'd miss, like, 60 games. You're dating yourself. Well, it's... <laughs> Orioles win 8 1. <laughs> Moving on. Number seven, Suns first, Mano Ginobili. Promised you a finger roll, you got one. Ginobili, the man had 28 points in the Spurs loss. All right, a little less caffeine in Seattle, please. Look at that play. That Number six, we nice had over 1,700 <laughs> people playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on their harmonica. That breaks the world record. Can you hear him? Oh. Good, wholesome Memorial Day entertainment. If you say so. Duke and Johns Hopkins. Johns. Aaron Benton. Seven saves, including one off his face. Talk about a painful facial. Ouch, babe. Number four, Devil Rays A's. Mark Kotze at the wall. Go get it. Oh. That's a tremendous catch. And the A's win the game. Snapping their eight-game losing streak. All right, but look at this. Number three, Cubs Dodgers again. J.D. Drew, please. Drew, laying out. Gosh, how did he not damage his wrist on that play? Incredible. Ooh, man. I'm telling you, see what I'm talking about? I saw that live. Collarbone. Unbelievable. Number two, Sun Spurs, Amari Stoudemire rejecting Tim Duncan. Phoenix held Duncan to only 15 points, four in the second half. This, the trademark marquee play of the game, the Suns win game four. Number one, it's lacrosse, Johns Hopkins against Duke, Jake Byrne. The goal to make it 9-8, which leads to this drama. Sports Center's